to Medical Monday. Dr. Barry Jarnigan is joining us, and uh, thank you for joining us as well. If you have a question about female urology or chronic pelvic pain, now is your chance to call. 615-737-PLUS is the number. You might be surprised by the answers you hear tonight, what help is available out there. We have Lucy on the line. Lucy, thank you for calling tonight. Yes, thank you for taking my sure. call. Uh, doctor, I've just got a simple question. I can hang up and take your answer off the air unless you want me to stand by for further questions, but uh, what is it, uh, you know, you were talking about the pelvic floor and how complex it was. What is it when you have such a, a bad bladder infection, maybe even a little bit septic, that six weeks later you still have problems trying to stand upright or, mm. you know, try to lift anything, uh, just just try to even walk and stand up right. I mean, you know, does a bladder infection, you know, affect other things? Okay, Lucy, great question. Dr. Jarnigan, what do you think? That is a great question. Uh, and uh, it gets back to the complexity of the pelvic floor and it gets, gets into everything is kind of interconnected. Mm. Um, I have a drawing that I show women sometimes and it shows how the nerves come out of the back and one nerve comes out and it branches and feeds everything. Wow. And so, uh, not for this lady, but in certain cases I can put in what I, it's kind of a pelvic floor pacemaker. That's very similar to the heart pacemaker. Everybody knows what a heart sure. pacemaker is. So I can put it in, I lay it down by this nerve before it branches and it actually can help urinary incontinence. It can also help fecal incontinence because I catch the nerve before it branches. Uh, and so all these things are interconnected. And so to this lady's question, it sounds like she had a very significant bladder infection. Uh, and uh, the problem is those kinds of bladder infections can turn into a recurrent bladder infection. Mm -hmm. So she needs to be careful. She needs to keep mindful of it. Because it's kind of like when we were kids and we skin our knee, and yeah. that blue jean, oh, you know, yes. caught on Gets and glued yes. to the knee, right? Yes. So when we treat bladder infections, we get rid of the bacteria, but the bladder wall stays red, and it's kind of ready for that next bacteria to come and mm -hmm. latch on. And so it sets women up for recurrent bladder infections, and because of anatomy, the differences right. between male and female, women are more prone and more susceptible. We used to think urine in women's bladders was sterile. Now we know that bacteria get in there all the time. So it's not about whether it gets in, in there or not. It's about what your body is going to do sure. with it. And so if you have a healthy bl bladder, you'll pee it out and it'll be no harm, no foul. And if you don't, it'll stick mm -hmm. and cause a bladder infection. And so that's kind of part of it. And in this lady's case, it sounds like, again, that it irritated the nerves. The nerves kind of backtrack back to the muscles. Now, you know, she had trouble moving. Mm -hmm. It's the pelvic floor muscles. Those pelvic floor, every time she moves, those pelvic floor muscles have to work. Yeah. Every time she bends over, those pelvic floor muscles have to work. So unless she's laying down, those pelvic floor muscles are working to try to hold her up and keep her stabilized. And so that nerve has gotten irritated. It's gotten back and caused muscle pain. And so probably if we get her on a regimen to keep her from getting a recurrent infection, and get her into a little PT. It sounds like this has not been ongoing for very long. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's common sense. The more short-lived the problem, sure. the easier it is yeah. to get them better and back on their feet and running. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about something that's probably very basic in your profession, Kegel exercises. Yeah. I mean, how, you know, when, you're, when a woman is pregnant, you hear, do your Kegel exercises, do your Kegel. I mean, how are they that important? They are important because you're, you know, you're exercising muscles that need to be exercised and it's just like any other muscle of the body the better you exercise it the better it's going to perform the key is being do, doing it the right way right which and is something when you, you haven't been doing them you're like oh, i don't know if i'm doing them right that's it well that's exactly <laughs> right and and that is a problem and if you if the ladies out uh listening if they've already had a baby mm -hmm. or two then they may have every woman who delivers a baby has some neuromuscular injury to the pelvic floor. Yep. I kind of call it the uh, pelvic stroke, right? I mean, it's there's nerve injury, there's muscle injury. So it's not about if you do have an injury; it's about how much injury sure. and how much recovers. 
And so if, you're, if you've been in that spot, you may actually, instead of contracting the muscle, you may actually be pushing. I mean, oh. your muscle brain may be so out of whack yeah. that you don't know. Now, a lot of women can do pelvic floor kegels, and if they can, they ought to be doing them. Uh, there are some, you know, relatively inexpensive vaginal cones that you can order over the internet. Uh, they used to be really expensive, now they're pretty cheap. Uh, but you can Google vaginal cones, vaginal weights, uh, and it comes generally in a series of five. And you start with the lightest one and you start working towards the heaviest one and basically you put it in and you squeeze on it huh. and try to hold it in and that will tell you whether A, whether you have a Kegel and B, uh, whether you're doing it the right way or not. Otherwise, it'll just fall out. And so Never that, heard of such a thing. Yeah, so that's a fairly easy thing to do. Um, but the key, you've got a pin in your hand. The yes. key is, you know, you hold that pin, and in your mind's eye, you think about holding that pin in with those muscles. Okay. And so you just kind of focus on holding that pin in. Uh, and uh, you want to hold it, w minus the weights, just doing kegels on your own. You want to hold it for five seconds, and you want to relax for five seconds. Again, it's, like, it's any other muscle. you got to let it relax. you got to let it breathe. And then you want to contract it again and hold it for five seconds and then relax it. You really don't have to do very many, 20, 25 a day. Okay. Do it in the car, on the way to work, yeah. on the way home. Uh, if you get the weights, you can do it when you're putting your face on in the morning, taking your face off And this is not just for pregnant women, right? No, like no, We should no. be doing this all of our lives. Yeah, this is, this is uh, <coughs> you were getting asked about prevention. You know, mm -hmm. you want to try to prevent problems. You want to get those muscles toned up. Uh, and even if you've had an injury, you've had a delivery, uh, you know, it's like having a bad, everybody knows about orthopedics, mm -hmm. right? You hurt your knee, so right. if you don't want surgery, you build up the muscles around the damaged knee to where you can function. You're not fixing the knee, but you're building the muscles up. You don't, you're not bothered by it anymore. Well, I do the same thing. I build the muscles up. So even if they have an injury, if they build the muscles up enough, they'll be okay. They'll sure. be fine. What about uh, uterine prolapse? Yeah. So. And, and that was kind of what I was alluding to mm -hmm. when we, I give the knee analogy. They may, women may come in and they may have a little bit of prolapse. And I, I tell everybody, if you think of your vagina as a room, mm -hmm. you have a door, you have a ceiling, you have a floor, and you have a back wall. Okay. The back wall is where the uterus is, bladder's in the attic, rectum's in the basement. So you go through the front door and you can get a droopy ceiling. So you're not really seeing your bladder, that, that's kind of a uh, colloquial term. Mm -hmm. I mean, people talk about their bladder falling. Their bladder is an innocent bystander. <laughs> it's the anterior vaginal wall. It's the ceiling that fell. Bladder sits in the attic, so mm -hmm. it falls just like whatever's in your attic is going to fall sure. if your ceiling caves in. Same on the floor. If the floor is weak, the rectum is going to push up into the vagina. And if they see something coming out, it's vaginal tissue, not rectum. Okay. Uterus, or if the uterus is gone, either way, the back wall comes down. Mm -hmm. That's the back wall falling. And so you can have a ceiling drooping and nothing else. You can have a back wall drooping and nothing else. You can have a floor drooping and nothing else. Or you can have some combination or all of them drooping and falling out. And so all those things happen. If you build the muscles up around it, a little droop, most women are walking around right now with a little droop and don't even know it because they, they're compensated. Mm -hmm. So it only becomes a problem if A, they start s visualizing and seeing something, or B, they start having symptoms. And those symptoms would be what? So they can get pelvic pressure. Uh, they can s feel or see mm -hmm. a bulge, uh, incontinence, urinary and or fecal, or the problem with emptying. If the prolapse gets bad enough, they have a hard time emptying. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be any, those are the most common. Uh, the ones that uh, tend to get to the office, pressure, or they actually can look down and see yeah. a bulge coming out. And that's obviously can be alarming, but I want to make sure the audience knows it's not going to fall and hit the floor. <laughs> it's not going to fall out right. of them. It's just going to bulge out and cause a lot of discomfort uh, and that sort of thing. When women are at that point, what do you do? Well, they'll have to come in and be seen. Yeah. Uh, and we can either, you know, if ladies don't want to have surgery, we can fit them with a brace. Again, like the knee analogy, mm -hmm. you don't want to have knee surgery, we put a brace on it. Uh, if you don't want to have vaginal surgery, we can give you a brace. Uh, many times we can fix the 
fit with a brace that will be functional so they can avoid surgery, either temporarily, you know, busy, things are going sure. on, they can't have surgery for a year, but they really need help. Is that a pessary? It's a pessary. Okay. That's exactly right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I read my notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you get an A for the course. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and uh, it, But if they don't want to do that, then there are a multitude of different types of surgeries that we can perform either, and again, it's all minimally invasive. We go through the vagina and or we go in through a laparoscope, mm -hmm. depending on where the prolapse is, what the goals of surgery are. Uh, and then in women who are, there's a lot of women who may be listening who don't think they're even a surgical candidate for whatever reason, either by age or by medical condition. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a simple, easy surgery that we can do that kind of builds a wall to kind of prevent things from coming out. Oh, and okay. that is an hour surgery and they come in, they go home, we don't even have, to, uh, it can be done under a regional anesthesia and they can be up and running around within a few weeks. Wow, okay. So there's a lot of different things that we can do and again, the goal is to match the problem mm -hmm. with a treatment option that fits the goal. Sure. And, and women look at me not uncommonly and go, well, you're the doctor, what's your recommendation? Exactly, tell me what and, to and do. That, and that's fair, but the realities are, and what I tell them is, well, I can pick something, but if it, you're not comfortable with that, mm -hmm. then you're not gonna be comfortable with what we're doing. So we need to make sure that we're finding a treatment option that matches what you're comfortable with. Sure. Okay. Very good. On that note, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, if you have questions, now is your time to call and get those answered. We have one more long segment here. So 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. Stay with us.